<laughs> You're live. Okay. Good morning, everybody. It's another day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. It's a day that we have never seen before. It is a new day. Praise the Lord. Good to see you, everybody. It's good to be alive this morning. And it's good to know that there's someone else that's alive other than yourself. Praise the Lord. Thank you again for all of your goodness and all your mercy. Thank you. Some folks have uh, given some Thanksgiving gifts and so forth and so on. Thank you so much for all that you do for me and my family. I appreciate it very, very, very much. Okay, thank you so much. Again, thank you for your faithfulness, your continued faithfulness uh, to the church and to me as well. And I thank you for all that you do. I can't thank you enough. I keep saying that, and I, I just can't thank you enough for all that you do. Appreciate you from the beat of my heart. Okay. Thank you. All right. I don't know what tomorrow holds. Again, I know who holds tomorrow. I don't know what our normal going to ever look like again. Uh, if there will ever be another normal. Nobody knows. We're all working on the expectation. And not knowing what tomorrow holds and what we're going to be doing tomorrow. We just have to take one day at a time and keep doing what we're doing, I suppose. We're, again, we're still doing some, some little work around the church on Saturdays. We didn't work yesterday, but anyway, I, I did a little something. But there are some things that need to be done. So you got some time on Saturdays, if you want to donate a little bit of time, that'd be fun. So I'll find something for you to do. If you want something to do. Okay. Alrighty then. I'm trying to think. Well, I, I know we haven't had a business meeting. And there's a, those kind of things kind of wear on me. I, we're coming up to uh, the end of the year. And at this time of year, we usually be making plans for uh, New Year's Eve service and all these kinds of things. Because the year is running out real fast, very fast. Every day just seems like to go by so fast. So I don't know what we'll, I, I, I was I'm thinking about the pastors of this district. And I don't know. I'm supposed to be the regional uh, overseer or whatever you call it, regional presbyter. But we haven't had anything. I don't, I don't even know how to talk with my pastors no more than that. that's how they're doing. But uh, we usually have plans for fifth, uh, third, fifth Sunday's meetings and all these kinds of things. We haven't had opportunities to do any of that. And I'm hoping that all everybody's doing fine as well as I know. I guess I, it's like me. If you don't hear nothing, I guess everything's all right. If you hear something, then you know what's going on. But when you don't hear anything, you assume that everything is going hunky-dory. Right? But anyway, that's where we are. And we do need to have some kind of meeting, somehow a Zoom meeting or something. As soon, since the year is running out, we begin to go into another year pretty soon. All right. Okay, enough of that. My, let me share my little few words that I have to share with you this morning, and I get out of the way. Is uh, my thought this morning is God's amazing love. God's amazing love. And he, we do serve, we are serving an amazing God. And he does amazing things every day in our lives, around us, and to us. And we thank him for being our God and the things that he does for us. Okay. Bobby, here's with me. Let us pray a prayer. I'll go into what I, my thought is for today. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you again for allowing us to be here again this morning. Ask you to bless these few words that you have given me. They might be a blessing to those that may be listening, that those that there may be someone that don't know you, 
would need to know, who needs to know you, would hear something that might be said, and they might give themselves to you and live for you as well in this last and evil day. We're living in, in, in a, a terrible time. So much goes on in our world around us. But Lord, we, our trust and our dependence is in you. For you are our provider. And we're looking to you to help us and keep us where we need to be. These blessings I ask this morning in your name and for your name's sake. Bless your people. Bless every member, every visitor that goes into our, well, we haven't had any visitors coming in and out of our doors because we are where we are. Hopefully one of these days we can get back into our sanctuaries and, and have visitors and so forth. But anyway, thank you, Lord, and bless these words in Jesus' name. Amen. God's amazing love. It is amazing. It amazes me that he even loves me. I don't deserve his love, but I thank him for his love. I don't deserve his love, but he gives it to all of us, whether we deserve it or not. But he's just the kind of God he is. His amazing love. We enter into his amazing love. It reads like this in Romans 5, and this is my verse, my Bible verse that I I have this morning, and uh, and it reads like this. The first verse says, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of highest privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. That's why we preach. That's why we teach. That's why we do the things that we do because we want to share God's glory. God's glory shines on us and we don't want to just keep it to ourselves but we want to share it with others. That's why we do what we do. We can find joy in our trials. We all are going through some trials right now, some more than others. My hope is that not any of you are suffering through your trials. The Bible tells us this. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they are good for us. For, for, because sometimes, I mean, trials come in so many forms. Sometimes in our, our family, our children, our loved ones, they just come in so many ways. But we have to, we learn to deal with them. They help us to learn to endure. And endurance develops strength of character in us. And character strengthens our confidence and expectations of salvation. And this expectation will not disappoint us. For we know how dearly God loves us. Because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Can't you, don't you, sometimes you can, you can just feel down and don't know why you feel the way you feel. And isn't it wonderful to know God so to a point where all of a sudden joy just overflows your soul and all of a sudden you start feeling good from the, your head to your toes and you can feel the spirit running up and down the avenues of your soul and you know that God is with you and you're not by yourself. Isn't it good to be like that? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. God's love is unchangeable. He knows exactly what we are and loves us anyway. No matter what we have done, he never points the finger at us. And now 
you see there, he don't do that to us. You know, sometimes we do that to somebody. Say we look at a person, point thing. Now you see there? See what you just done to me? Well, God doesn't do that. So he never points a finger at us. He just lives, loves us in spite of who we are. I knew you were not worth it. He don't say that to us. No, but he always he's always there with open arms. In fact, he created us because he wanted other creatures in his image upon whom he could pour out his love and who would love him in return. Well, that's why he made man, Adam and Eve, and to put them in the garden in the first place. Because he wanted other creatures to love him. I mean, he could have not made a man, could have not made a woman. He could have just had the trees and the plants and the flowers and all of that to himself. But he wanted another creature that he made in his image to love him and respect him on his own without somebody forcing him to do that. He also wanted that love to be voluntary. That's what I'm just saying. Not forced. So he gave us freedom of choice. You can choose. You can choose who you love. You can choose what you love. You can choose just what you, whatever you want to do in this life. Because of the free will, we have free choices. We can make any kind of choice that we want to make. The ability to say yes or no in our relationship to him. God does not want us to be like, be built mechanized love. The kind that says we must love God because it is what our parents demand or our church preaches. Only voluntary love satisfies that heart of, of God. God is a God of love. And he is not blind to man's plight. He knows, he knows what we're going through. He knows when we're going through difficult things and tasks from time to time. He's not, he, he knows our plight. He knows where we are going and where we have been. And he knows our end as well. From the very beginning of man's journey, God had a plan for man's deliverance. In fact, the plan is so fantastic that it, un, it ultimately lifts each man who will accept his plan far above even the angels. You hear me? God's all-consuming love for mankind was decisively love to, for demonstrated at the cross, where his compassion comes from two Latin words meaning to suffer with. God was willing to suffer with man. God's love did not begin at the cross. It began in eternity before the world was ever established, before the time of clock, civil, civilization began to move. The concept stretches our minds to their ultimate limit. Can you imagine what God was planning when the earth was without form and void? There was only a deep, silent darkness of outer space that formed as a vast gulf before the brilliance of God's throne. God was designing the mountains and the seas, the flowers and the animals. He was planning the bodies of his children and all of their complex parts. In all of this darkness, I can only imagine that he smiled and the light broke. Wow. And those who have their doubts, how could creation be by chance? Even before the first dawn, he knew all that would happen. In his mysterious love, he allowed it. The Bible tells us about the lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. Revelations 13 and 8. God foresaw what his son was to suffer. It is, has been said, 
that there was a cross in the heart of God long before the cross was erected at Calvary. You hear that? God foresaw what his son was to suffer. It has been said there was a cross in the heart of God long before the cross was erected at Calvary. As we think about it, we will be overwhelmed at the wonder and greatness of his love for us. This virus has and still taking lives. Don't know how many more will leave here. I just wonder how many of those would have accepted the Lord as their Savior if they had known their end. Listen, I don't know how many more will leave, but I, I, I do know this. But if you're listening to my message this morning and you don't know him as your Savior, please don't put it off any longer. Tomorrow is not promised. Today is the day that you can find God's love and protection for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones. I know what I'm talking about. Now, hope does not disappoint because love, the love of God, has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us, sent back by our Father. When Jesus went to heaven to be with him, he sent the Holy Spirit back so that we would have something, a someone, not, he's not a something, he's a someone, that we would have someone who could guide us and lead us into all truth. Though Jesus was gone back to heaven, he still wanted someone to be here to guide us and direct us. He sent the Holy Spirit, and he is here, and he will come into your hearts and will be with you and guide you and lead you into all truth. Listen. There is nothing in this world like the amazing love of God. You hear me? Nothing. My love, your love, no other love in this world is like the amazing love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This world will eventually fade away. But the love of God, his amazing love, will always remain. You can take this to the bank. It will stand, it will increase, and it will grow dividends. Just put your trust in him. And he will take care of you and supply all of your needs according to his abundance and amazing love that he has for this world. I'm telling you what you can put your trust in. You can't put your trust in money. You can't put your trust in houses. You can't even put your trust in your loved one. They'll let you down sometime. Family will let you down. Friends will let you down from time to time. But there's someone that I know. His name is Jesus Christ. He will never, never, let you down. You, we let him down from time to time. We have the ability to let him down. But he, he's such a gracious, gracious and loving God. Even when we let him down, we come back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. He's standing there with his arms wide open. said, okay, daughter. Okay, son. Okay, whomever you are. You can, you're welcome back. That's the kind of God that we serve. The amazing love that he has for this world in which we live. I wish this world had that love for him, but it doesn't. There's so much goes on around us. I don't know how he puts up with, I don't know how he put up with me. I don't know how he put up with all the evils and the, the, 
the sinful things that is going on in this world. He must be, he has to be getting sick to his stomach about some of the things that he see going on in this world right now. And I don't know how much longer he's going to put up with it. I know, I know that this world is going to come to an end one of these days, probably sooner than we think. We think every day is going to keep going on and on and on, but it's not so. There's an end somewhere. It has to. He said so. You know why I believe that? Because this little book says so. It says it's going to come to an end. I like what Peter says. Peter says it's going to burn up with fervent heat. Everything's going to burn up with fervent heat. And I, I know what and John says in Revelation. He says he looked and he saw a new heaven coming down from God. It's God not coming back to this old filthy earth that we're living in. But when he comes back and set up his reign on this old world, in this world, he's going to be on a new earth and a new heaven that he's going to come and be our God and we'll be his children. Amen. Live the life. Live the life. Live this life. If you don't know him as your Savior, please, 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 please find a place and ask him to come into your heart. I know you won't be sad about that decision if you make it today. Bow your head with me. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for every member there's some precious members in the body of Christ. I thank you for them. They've been so gracious and kind to your servant. And I please ask you to bless every member of the body of Christ. Bless them this morning for me. Would you do that? Bless me even at this time of year. We'll enter into the last time. We Pretty soon we'll be uh, celebrating Christmas a great time of year, great remembrance, great time to share with one another. And we ask you to bless the household of faith, bless those who have and bless those who have not, that they might be able to have during this season. Would you bless this season for them in a special way? Lord, if you do all these things for us, we thank you for what you have done for us. We thank you for where you have brought us from. We thank you for where we know if we keep our hope and faith in you, where you're going to lead us one of these days. We want you to bless us and keep us. Lord, these blessings and all blessings I ask this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you out there. May the Lord bless you real good. Amen. God bless you. I'm still here. I'm not running off yet. Hello. Hello. Say bye. Say bye to these people. Goodbye.